Welcome, y'all. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Tammy. How you doing? Good. Oh, it's, we just survived that deep freeze down oh, here. Yeah, because we're so wimpy in Louisiana. <laughs> y'all, we had to shut the interstate down because it was like 26 degrees. Oh. Look, but they were slipping and sliding everywhere, and it was a big wreck, so I you can't even blame us. Did you see on the news where the, the 18-wheelers were trying to get up, up over the Mississippi River Bridge, and they just were like... They just came they right just, yeah, back down. Yeah, wasn't... Yeah, I would think they would know better. It's not about knowing. Our roads are made for water. Yeah. They're made to get water clear, fast. We're humped up in the middle. Mm-hmm. And so it, they're not made for ice. We don't have any salt. Nope. We just put sand on it. I don't even know if that helps. I don't know. Okay. It makes us feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a meme where it was uh, a dump truck with Mardi Gras king cake sugar in the back of it, dumping it on the road. Yeah. I saw one doing slap your mama down on yeah. the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay. Um, Sherry's going to tell us a story tonight. Yes. And we are kind of, uh, we're doing this, this is on a school night. We're on a week night. It's I weird. Know. It is weird. But we don't want to miss bringing y'all an episode. Yeah, so we're here. So we're here. All yeah. right. Oh, and look, we just did our meet and greet. That's right. And it was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you all so much for showing up. Thanks for every to everybody for coming out. Um, behind the camera, speaking of coming out to the meet and greet, Colin's here. He's not mic but behind the camera is Ashley. So thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. And thanks to everybody for coming out to the meet and greet. It was awesome. It really, really was. Y'all were so much fun. You were some twisted, fun people. Like us. Yeah. <laughs> you look normal, but then we start talking. <laughs> All right. What you going to tell us about? Uh, we're going to tell the story of Brenda Schaefer. Okay. Okay. And it's got some legal twists and turns that got real interesting. I heard about this story before it concluded the first time. So it was fun oh. to get back and see the conclusion. Awesome. I'm glad there's a conclusion. Yes. Yes, there is. Okay, so we're going to start with Brenda Sue Schaefer. Brenda Sue. In uh, Louisville, Kentucky. All right. All right. And everybody argues about how to pronounce that. Louisville. Louisville. <laughs> yeah, it's real fast. You don't want to make your mouth move too much while you're saying it. Okay. And this was, uh, she was your typical 80s girl. Big hair. Cute, cute, cute. You know, wore the... Shoulder pads. Shoulder pads and the big collar. Yeah, the, the big glamour pads. shots. Absolutely. And she was. She was adorable. Tiny little thing. Absolutely adorable. She was having some problems in the romance department. Um, she had a marriage fail and a long-term mm. re relationship fail. She was having, we'll call it intimacy problems. Okay. Okay. And, you know, this is still, uh, even today, you still got to you know suck it up bitch take a pill and go on yeah cheer up bitch <laughs> yeah well she was having um pain oh with intimacy okay so you know she was having real problems yeah but nobody's gonna believe her no you know, what man back in 1986 is gonna say no let's get you fixed they're gonna just say let's go to the doctor and find out what's going on and yeah. obviously you know even now like if i go in with a problem the doctor's like oh we're gonna cut something out of you and see if that does it or take a pill or take a pill yeah yeah you're right yeah i mean you can't get hormone levels checked without no. No. screaming crying begging. yes you're right so anyhow so she had a couple of failed relationships she was doing okay though on her own she had her own condo she was a uh, nurse's aide in maybe in the 80s, maybe in Louisville in particular. They must have paid better. So is she like in her 20s? She's in her early 30s. So, early 30s. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she gets set up on this blind date with this guy named uh, Mel Ignatow or Ignato. Mm -hmm. He was a salesman from Pennsylvania originally moved down south. He is wealthy oh, okay okay he gets it done he travels to asia on sales trips he has this big huge boat you know big yacht he has a corvette he is 
like in every way getting it done in the 80s. He is Magnum P.I. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except for a little dumpier. His hairline's a little further back and he's got some thick glasses. Okay. But otherwise. <laughs> but otherwise. <laughs> he's he's a divorcee also. He's got three kids. They're older. Yeah, he's a little older than she is. All right. And uh, so they start dating. They date for a couple of years. <clears throat> but he's a real controlling guy. Not Super good. controlling. Like, he would go on these sales trips. And she had a spreadsheet printed out for her on when he was going to call her. Oh, my gosh. And if she wasn't available to take the call, she was in trouble. Mm -mm -mm. You know, this is 86, 87, 88 during this whole relationship. He would he would call her at work. Now, keep in mind, she's not a receptionist. If she wasn't the one answering the phone, she got in trouble. I mean, she's a nurse's assistant. She's not going to be answering the phone. Right. Now, she does. I don't even know why this is a job, but she's a nurse's assistant in a dental office. Okay. Maybe their terms are different because I know. Yeah, that that doesn't seem. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know what she's doing. Okay. And nobody got really into it. They kept getting off in the weeds and other parts of her life. All right. So um, there's that. There's, he is constantly pressuring her, not just for sex, but for kinky stuff. Oh, so he's a freaky deek too. He's a freaky deek. All right. And there was even this one night where she was asleep and she wakes up and he's holding chloroform over her face. What the hell? (laughs) Yeah. That's beyond a kink that is beyond a kink so it was he probably had a plan for something that she was not down with at all so she um you know she starts telling some people about it she starts working her way out of this relationship he is violent he's got fetishes he is controlling but he also you know he love bombs her oh yeah tons of jewelry tons of gifts tons of trips And she is literally the only person she knows that likes him at all. Everybody else hates him. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they couldn't just, like, go out. Yeah. They couldn't just go out to a dinner. He would have to invite people over to his yacht to hang out. But then he wouldn't let them eat or drink on it because you might spill something. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, just every weird thing possible. All right. Um, whenever she told about the chloroform thing, her friends were like, "Uh, no, you got to go. And she says, but he just said I needed to relax. And they were like, you were asleep. How much more relaxed? (laughs) You were unconscious. No shit. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, so seriously, seriously bad. Well, you know, Mel ends up, he's getting into a little trouble at work, you know, in sales at any point. You could have been the top salesman last year and this year. If you're not meeting your numbers. And then you're out. Then you're out. Yeah. So he was, you know, things were getting a little shaky at work. She decides to leave him. She did break up with him. Did they live together? No. Okay. In fact, at this point, she was living with her mom. So it wasn't like she couldn't, she didn't mm-hmm. have a place to go. No. In fact, she had two places to go. Okay. Because she was living with her mom. Her mom was sick. And I think it was lupus. And so she was helping care for her mom. And she still had her own condo. Okay. So this was... She had places to go. She had places to go. She had a job. Her boss, the dentist, loved her. Absolutely loved her. You know, thought she was not in a kinky, nasty way. right. He just thought that she was just such a wonderful, sweet person. person. Great employee. And because of that whole phone call thing, he knew that this was a bad relationship for her. And he yeah. knew that she that this guy was bad news. So anyhow, on um, September 23rd of 1988, Brenda says, hey, I got to go meet Mel and give him back this jewelry. He wants this $20,000 in jewelry back. Right. And, you know, it's... it's Sales are down. I need to hawk some of your jewelry. It's an easy price to pay to get out of this relationship. Sure. She doesn't show up anywhere. After that? After that, she's gone. 
Wow. So her parents and her siblings report her missing. Mel reports her missing, too. <clears throat> Funny. Uh-huh. Yeah, this guy that she doesn't live with, who she's broken up with. Reports her missing. Reports her missing. Okay. So, anyhow, as soon as they start talking to people, they realize this guy. He ain't right. He ain't right. Yeah. And um, they suspected this male guy. They're looking around. They can't find any physical evidence. They can't find any you know, this is no not a time where you have digital evidence. There's not right cameras. Yeah, there's no cell phones. There's no right. Yeah, you know, he says, um, "Oh, she came over. We weren't having problems. We weren't uh, broke up. We went all around town. We, you know, did some shopping. We had to take her car because my Corvette was having a tire problem. And so, but other than that, everything, everything was honky dory. Everything was honky dory. She left and then I just couldn't get in touch with her. So that's why I reported her missing. Wow. Okay. I don't know about you, but I never saw a controlling man letting a woman drive him around anywhere. No, no, no. It's just not going to happen. Now I think it happens a little more. You know, because now they're kind of wimpy controlling guys, but back, you know, you know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're in the basement gaming and <laughs> sis is going to work and cooking right. and doing everything. Yeah. But back then they, they wouldn't no. let you. Back. Especially and, if he had a Corvette. He's yeah. driving that thing everywhere. He was going to want to show off his Corvette. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And uh, so anyhow, he, uh, there's nothing happening. Nothing's coming up. No leads. No leads. Well, un- is her car missing too? Can't remember exactly what happened with the car. Seems like the car was found. Okay. Car was found. But, you know, this thing goes on for a good bit. Okay. After that point. All right. But, but Brenda's nowhere to be found. And that's the mm-hmm. more important point. Mm-hmm. I think he was kind of setting it up where the it would look like she might have had car trouble and then vanished on the way. Wow. But, she, but uh, yeah, her car was found and it wasn't found far from her home. So she could have made it home if she'd had a car problem. There. Gotcha. Yeah. So anyhow, um, the dentist yeah. that I told you about, he couldn't stand that this guy was getting away with it. So he had written a letter, sent it to his friend in Miami to send it back up to Mel to say, if you don't tell us where this body is, Cubans are going to come and yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's a pretty smart cookie. He is a smart cookie, except for he had actually floated this idea past detectives previously. And they said, no, you can't do that. Yeah. So Mel starts pushing for this old man to get charged with making a terroristic threat. Oh, so it was figured out that uh-huh. it was the dentist. It was real easy to figure it out. The dentist told the cops, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. Do you think it's a good idea? And the cops said, no, that's illegal. We cannot do that. Put two and two together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was pretty, pretty spot on. So anyhow, they go in to... um Convict the dentist of making a terroristic threat, and he was convicted. He was. Wow. The asshole gets away with shit, and the nice guy. The yeah. nice old man gets, it, it was just a fine. It was a okay. real easy thing. Okay. He was ready to retire anyway. He just kind of now <laughs> disappears out of the story. All right. But I think he was happy to at least do something. Something. Because it, it felt like nothing was happening. Well, at least it kept it kind of in the forefront of people's minds. Right. Why he did it. Yeah. And so Mel is such a narcissist that he had to get on the stand, even though it wasn't necessary, and point fingers at at old Doc, you yeah. know, and saying, I don't know what happened, and you did this, and I didn't have anything to do with this, and how dare you make threats against me? Okay. So that happens. Then uh, the DA decides to go hold a grand jury for Mel. To see if they're, yeah. Yeah. And um, 
to see if there's enough to indict him. Yeah. Well, Mel, again, has to get on the stand. Wow. You don't get on the stand when no. you're being indicted by a grand jury. No. You, you let the DA do their thing, and then you move ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mel decides to, you know, say his piece. And again, he's saying, I didn't do it. It didn't have anything to do with it. She ran off on her own. Well, he mentions in this grand jury um, a... Another woman, Mary Ann Shore. Mary Ann Shore? Mary Ann Shore. Okay. Shore. Mary Ann Shore. Yeah. So he mentions So her. Mel brings Mary Ann into the picture. Into the picture. Well, the police hadn't heard about her. Yeah. No, not at all. Okay. So the police are like, who is, she, who, yeah. who is this? Is she missing too? No, she's not missing. Um, It looks like she had been having an off and on affair with Mel for years. Okay. And she's night and day up against little Brenda. Wow. She's a bigger girl, thick glasses, and a lot more needy than Brenda ever thought about being. So Mel's trying to throw some suspicion in in her direction, Mary Ann's direction. Right. She was the jealous lover. Yeah, kind of throwing a little bit of suspicion to her. Well, the cops are like, hey, let's go check her out. Yeah, of course. Well, it turns out that Marianne is also an idiot. All right. She can't keep her mouth shut for shit. She just went on and on. She told everything. Said that, well, Mel told her that um, Brenda needed sex therapy. And okay. he and Marianne were going to give her sex therapy. Oh, my God. Okay. So Marianne helped him. Come up with a location. She did screen testing to make sure that they wouldn't be heard. Oh, my God. Gave him some space to bury something on her property. The hell? And on the night of September 23rd, 1988, Mel shows up with Brenda. To Mary Ann's place. To Mary Ann's. Had ties Brenda to a coffee table repeatedly sexually assaults her oh my god for hours um and marion's there i'm marion's there and she's in charge of the camera oh no took photos all night oh my god again this is back in 1988 this yeah. is not a digital camera mm -mm. So, took photos all night, abused her, beat her. Eventually, <clears throat> she's dead. Oh, my God. And they take her out and bury her. So, Marianne lays it all out and just says, well, I didn't really do anything. But she lays out this whole timeline. Yeah. And if it was in 1988, she would have been charged with murder. I can't believe she wasn't charged with, she, was she charged with something? Eventually. Okay. All right. Okay. So they even kind of, and when you've got somebody that's that freaking stupid, maybe they should not be your linchpin in your case. He he brought, I mean, Mel brought Marianne into this whole thing. If he had not brought her up to then the they police, they would have this. never, he's stupid too. He is stupid. And so Marianne is um, supposed to wear wire, supposed to say certain words. Supposed to get certain things out of them. Out of Mel. She, she biffs she fucked it. that up. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, she fumbled that ball all over the place. Never said, never got him to completely say things. Yeah. And so the tape was okay. All right. But not great. Okay. Okay. So they go to trial. One big problem was um, the tapes got leaked. What? Yeah, to the press. <sighs> so we had to delay trial. Obviously, the defense is pissed. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if it was a purposeful leak or not. Who I mean, knows? In discovery, things move from place to place. Right. I've heard it said that it was accidental in discovery, and I've also read where it was a purposeful 
because the prosecution side wanted to bolster their case. But what this meant get was, it out in the public. Yeah, yeah. This meant a delay in the trial. It, that's crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very crazy. So uh, then they ended up having to change venues, and they had to change to Kenton County, Kentucky. All right. Kenton County is a very um, upper middle class, very white. Conservative. Very conservative county in Kentucky. Well, we got a couple of issues against us. They don't seem to like slutty women. Mm. And the lead prosecutor was black. Oh, wow. And so, sign yeah. of the times. Yeah. Uh, it's just a thing. Okay. I'm, so, I'm holding my breath because I'm feeling like this is not going to work out well. It's not. Okay. It's not. So, in comes uh, their star witness, Mary Sue. Mary Ann. Uh, yeah, Mary Ann. Mary Sue. Mary Ann Shore. I was, that's where I was getting the suit from was the other S. <laughs> Mary Ann comes waltzing in in a freaking miniskirt in 1988. Uh. That wouldn't be as big a deal now. Yeah, no. But at the time, it was a big deal. I'm sure. And, you know, had her top buttons undone, had her mini skirt on, was sitting, giving people crotch shots from the... <laughs> it was... Sharon Stone in it. She was Sharon Stone in it, but... <laughs> oh, and then giggling and inappropriate on the witness stand. So she wasn't a good... She wasn't a good witness. No. They're discounting her from the get-go. They're discounting her. And I think they actually discounted the victim a little bit, too. Oh, that's sad. she did participate in some of these kind of kinky events. Yeah, yeah. And in 88, that would have been seen as... Yeah. Really low. Right. And I'm assuming that uh, Kenton County is probably southern baptist just because of where they are <laughs> right you know <laughs> so yeah that yeah. makes it just one more yeah yeah level of conservative yeah so we have not real crazy about the victim not real crazy about the star witness and not real crazy about the lead prosecutor how do they feel about mel <laughs> they felt like he was innocent oh my god he walks away wow Totally innocent. Even though Mary Ann was there. Yeah. Even though she gave detailed testimony. Wow. Now, Mary Ann did take a plea um, for tampering with evidence and that sort of thing. Yeah. So she went to jail for five years. And he got nothing. He got nothing. That Not sucks. A dead sucks. gum thing. He tied this woman down over a coffee table and abused her for hours with tools mm -mm. up to and including this one. This part gets me um, a paddle that his brother gave him. Oh, gross. I mean, is beating women a family affair? Right. I've, I've never had a with love paddle given to me. Mm mm. And I've been known to beat a person or two. In if my you're life. from Kentucky, write us and tell us. <laughs> no. Yeah, one person tried to say it was a fraternity paddle. <clears throat> Another person tried to say it was like a ping pong paddle. I don't know, but it's, it's terrible. Just skeeves me out yeah. so badly. Yeah. Okay. He's so, just gross. Yeah. So Mary goes to jail five years. So she's getting more time. Yeah. Than Mel is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Mel's house, he had to sign it over to his mom during all of this. To keep from losing it? To keep from losing it. Yeah. During all of this, mama dies. So the house gets sold off during the trial. All right. Big, fine, fancy house. Now, another couple buys it. Now, six months after... Mel gets acquitted. And I'm not even going to try that last name too much. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Um, a carpet layer is working in this house because they had that brown wall-to-wall -wall shag, shag carpet. Yeah. Family hated it. Yeah. You know, this house had too many, like, touches that were just of the time. Right. Like hot pink bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Yeah. So they were, you know, making it there. 
And while they had ripped up the carpet, there was a part in the hallway that was really hard to get to. So they get to it, get it up, and then the carpet layer's like, holy fuzzballs, Batman. There's a heating vent in the floor beneath the carpet covered up with carpet and pad. And they tacked the carpet around it really well. Wow. Well, this family that bought this place had already worked with the FBI in the past on this case. Okay. And had let them come search. So they're like, ring, ring, ring. Hey, um, we found something. Phoebe, we, 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 we need you to come see us. Secret dungeon. <laughs> Secret dungeon. It was film canisters in the vent. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know he can't be tried again. Nope. For no. Brenda Sue. No, nope. double jeopardy. Right. Double jeopardy. So tell me what's on the film. It is the murder <gasps> and the rape. So. So we know without a single doubt he did it. So what, what can they do? Well, they got a little crafty. The first thing they did was probably one of my favorite things. There was a female FBI agent. They went and picked him up and they said, oh, we're going to need you to strip because none of this film showed his face in any shot. So we need to see your Willie. We need to see all of you. Yes. And then she posed him in the poses of that night and took pictures and he was pissed. Oh, my God. Because some woman was handling him, was handling him. And oh, my gosh. Yeah. All his moles matched up. Yeah. Really matched up. Um, and he was even wearing the same watch he wore wow. that night. Every little chest hair matched up. Everything. So just because it was him from the neck down didn't mean a thing. And this was great. I had I had totally skimmed over the fact that they had eventually found Brenda's body in the approximate location that Marianne said it was. Oh, okay. But it had been 14 months. So it was too much decomp. Too much decomp. DNA at the time was brand right. spanking you. There was yeah. nothing they can do. She had sopified. Oh, yeah. Because it was wet ground. Like waxy. Yeah. Yes. So they couldn't even get a good cause of death. Wow. Because she had turned to wax and bone. Yeah. At that point. Uh, so it, was, it, was, it was rough. Yeah. So anyhow, um, what they do is they charge him with perjury okay well there you go yeah you remember those two times he threatened oh no he forced him his way onto the witness stand yes to have his say yes those were two different trials so he goes in for federal perjury and he goes in for state perjury all right back to back because as he's ending one sentence he's got to go in for the other perfect yeah yeah we kind of like that how long can we give him on perjury charges? He got probably around 12 years in the pen, plus his holding times for trials. So yeah. he got a little bit of time. Yeah. And he wasn't a spring chicken anyway at all. Because let's see, this he was he was 50 when he killed her. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so he was, yeah. He, he's getting out. He's like 60-something. Yeah. So I'm okay with that, especially... After what I found out happened. Tell me. This is the part that just thrills me. So on September 1st, 2008. Now this happened after I first heard about this. I mean, previously on my first hearing of this case, all I knew is he got some time for perjury. Right. And it was kind of a little bit okay, but it didn't really. No, it didn't. It didn't, didn't leave you with the, yeah, yeah, with that warm, fuzzy feeling. Okay, so on September 1st, 2008, Mel is found dead in his apartment. He was 70 years old, and um, he had fallen onto his glass coffee table. <sighs> oh, karma's a bitch. <sighs> oh, my goodness. The coffee table killed him. Yeah, yeah, glass coffee table. Yeah. He killed someone on glass coffee table, kills him. Wow lacerated his head and his arm and bled to death wow yeah that's awesome and marianne also died 
youngish. Yeah. Um, I forgot what her illness was, but she had died youngish. Well, bless her heart. She was just not smart. She was not smart. She was needy. Yeah. And I mean, she should have turned him in. She should have. She should have said, hmm, I'm not available to do sex therapy on right. another yeah. grown adult female. Right. For which I have no yeah. you know, training for. You, right. you you do you, boo, but I'm going to sit back here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you do you, boo, boo. <laughs> Yeah, no, that makes me think every, whenever I heard about the, uh, that's the death, just, I was like, that's just super karma right there. Yeah. And see, most of everybody that ever loved Brenda died within just a few years of her oh, death. Okay. So there was nobody really around to see the, his just his death. just death. I mean, they know now. Yeah. But uh, that almost makes you believe in ghosts that I, they push oh, that old man into that glass coffee table. Yeah, maybe they all ganged up, all her and all of her friends. Maybe so, but oh, and pushed him. That made me happy. That's that crazy. Made me happy. That's that was a crazy story. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for that. You're welcome. On the fly and pulling it out my ear. I appreciate it 100 <laughs> percent because you know I'm this time of the year. It's it's. Hard pressed to to make it week to week on the oh yeah on the pod. So I appreciate you. Well, we're we're gonna get caught up now after Mardi Gras, I think, and we'll, yeah, things will be, be a lot more smooth. All right, and All right. I hear you have something for us. Crazy laws on the books. Okay, what state? New Jersey. Who hot dog? Jay Z. All right. <laughs> so this one's obviously old. Automobiles are not to pass horse-drawn carriages on the street. You know what? They probably still need it because of the Amish up there. Oh, is that where they are? They're everywhere where it snows, I, I swear. I didn't know it was New Jersey. New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, all of that has a lot of Amish. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that would make sense then. Yeah. That's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit funny. Bernard's Township, New Jersey. Okay. It's illegal to frown as the town is a frown-free town zone. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no frowning for you. No RBF? No. No resting bitch face there either. Mm -mm. All right. In Caldwell, you may not dance or wear shorts on the main avenue. Okay. So one town wants you to be nothing but happy. And the yep. other town wants you to be miserable. Well, I mean, what if you were dancing and wearing shorts at the same time? Would that be a felony? I mean, that's just, I don't know. Okay. Mm. That redneck Riviera is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Creskel, New Jersey. All cats must wear three bells to warn birds of their whereabouts. Oh. Is that, I mean, three? Do we need, our, anyway. Yeah, I don't know why three, but. You really want to give the birds a fighting chance yes, there. Yes, you do. Okay. In New Jersey, it is illegal to delay or detain a homing pigeon. I know, that's got to be old. Yeah. Uh, it's against the law for a man to knit. During, At all? During fishing season. <laughs> you best be out there catching fish if you need something to do with your hands catch you some fish oh my gosh okay they must have a thing about frowning there because it is against the law to frown at a police officer this is a different i mean it just says new jersey it doesn't yeah. have a specific all right it's illegal to slurp soup Okay. That's just annoying. That Yeah. And there's some people that can get really nauseated if they hear stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In Newark, it's illegal to sell ice cream after 6 p.m. unless the customer has a note from his doctor. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I've been to Newark a couple of times. I mean, your doctor's writing you scripts for ice for cream. For ice cream after 6 p.m. Yeah. Okay, and finally, this is definitely an old one. You cannot pump your own gas. All gas stations are full service and full service only. It's still like that. <gasps> really? Like the only place where 
you know, you get out of your car because like, you know, you're driving up the East Coast. Are people in New Jersey not um, allowed smart enough to pump their own gas? They're perfectly smart enough. It's just against the law in New Jersey. That's so weird. I did not know that. Yeah, I drive. You know, I have a son in New York and, uh, you know, I had grandchildren in Virginia. So that whole East Coast. So is it more expensive? Because I remember yes. when I was a kid, full service. If you, you know, if you pumped it yourself, mm-hmm. it was a little cheaper. If, it, if you pulled into the full service, you had to pay a little more. Gas prices are high in New Jersey. And nobody can pump their own gas. And nobody can pump their own gas. I wonder if you have to go to be able to pump gas, if you have to go to a class or something. I don't to, know. Maybe so. Yeah, have a certification. Because I always thought it might have had some kind of weird state EPA thing. Yeah. That that was why it's kind of offensive i'm perfectly capable of pumping i pumped my own gas this morning yeah 48 other continental or contiguous united states and we can go get our own gas you can do it in alaska you can do it in hawaii yeah i don't know but that's it that's the crazy laws for Mm -hmm. new jersey new jersey and i would have sworn that one wasn't still real but i know that one is totally real and it freaks me out (laughs) Because then you've got some, you know, not all of them are young kids. Some of them are people whose career choice is pumping Pumping gas. gas. And you have to Do you tip them? I did, but I don't know if I was supposed to. Okay. (laughs) And you have somebody who is interacting with you out away from people yeah who may be a little sketchy and yeah. you may be a little late at night it was it was very disconcerting well i wonder if they can pump your gas after 6 p.m without a note from the doctor <laughs> <laughs> here let's oh, break a couple of laws go that's get, right go and get a dance uh, and wear shorts on main street <laughs> exactly and you know it gets, it gets hot there sometimes yeah. <laughs> goodness can't gracious. do it All right, so um, if y'all like the story that Sherry just told us and you want to help support the show, go to Patreon slash Grits. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash Grits. And don't forget to go join us on Facebook at our group, the Grits Group Family, Friends, and Fans, the Effers or the Gritsters. And we also have a TikTok and Mm -hmm. we're on YouTube. You can watch us. Insta. Yep, we're on all the social medias, and um, thanks again for everybody who came out to the meet and greet, and Ashley, thank you for camera switching for us. Anything else? I think that'll be all. All right, well, we love y'all, and tell your mom and them to listen, and we're going to let Zydeco Mike take us out.